Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to export uh, structured 3D geometries in polygon file format, otherwise known as PLY. And I'm going to be showing you how to do that using the ASCII uh, format. I'm going to be doing this on MATLAB 2020 revision B. So first of all I want to show you the structure of the file first. Here I have uh, what you should hopefully be able to create once you're done with this video. So first of all, the first line has to be the letters PLY. This is going to tell the software reading your 3D object that is reading it from a PLY structured file. The next line is one of these three lines over here. In this case, I'm using the format ASCII 1.0. Then you list uh, the element vertices, how many there are in your geometry. Then property float X, Y, and Z. Just as they appear here, they don't change then element face, the number of faces that you're going to have in your uh, 3D geometry, then this line right here, just copying it just as it appears here, and then end header. This will tell the program that you will start listing the vertices. So yeah, these three numbers are the X, Y, and Z coordinates of each vertex. So if you have 441 vertices, then you're going to have 441 lines here. So you're going to list them all and then you're going to start listing the facets and the facets the first number is going to be how many vertices make up the facet it can be four or three in this case i'm going to be showing you how to make three so we're essentially creating triangles the next three numbers are the indices for the vertices that make up that uh, facet so in this case the software is going to read that the facet has three vertices vertex 0 1 and 22 so 0 is the very first one so it's going to be 0 the next one is 1 and then 22 is going to be whatever software is. So once you're done listing all the facets, then it should be done, it should work. So let's go to MATLAB. Okay, so just like for STL, we're going to start by creating a name variable where we are going to input the file of our, the name of the file. So it's going to be my underscore PLY dot PLY. Here we have to add the extension and then we're going to create a 3D geometry. Just an example. We're going to open the file and we're going to give that a variable that is going to be called output. You can put any name. Just remember that the file ID is going to be called output. So if open parentheses, we're going to open the file with this same name. If there's no fi file with that name already here, then it is going to create one, comma, and W because we'll, we will be writing on that file. Then we can go ahead and start writing stuff on the file. The first thing we're going to write is going to be PLY. And we're going to add a new line here. Then we are going to write the next line. Then we're going to add the next line, which is this format ASCII.10. So format. And then we add a new line. Now I want to extract the number of rows that the geometry will have. Remember that, it is, that this is for structured geometry. So point clouds and all of that is not, this is not going to work for that. So here you can extract the number of rows from X, Y, and Z. They are all going to have the same number of rows and columns. So you can use any one of them. I'll be using X. And before doing anything else, I want to create a matrix that will contain the index values for each of these coordinate points for each of the vertices so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to create a new array called index and i bet there are easier and faster ways to do this this is the way that i figured out worked so if you have a better idea let me know in the comments i'm going to be using the function reshape i want the, the to create an array that goes from zero to the number of elements in x minus one i'm going to explain why minus one in just a second it's going to be number of columns number of columns and the number of rows it's going to be equal to rows and then i'm going to transpose that this way okay so when i run this you see that i'm going to have x y and c are going to be 21 by 21 these are the x y and c values for each vertex and then what I did was create another 21 by 21 uh, array, but in this case, it contains the index values for each of those vertices. So this is going to be, so if I go back to the X array, this one is going to be the index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. So you can see 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And the reason why I wanted to start at 0 is because just like in C++ and Python, 
PLY starts indexing from zero, not from not from one. So that's the reason here. Instead of one, I have zero, and then I have to subtract one to keep the same number of of elements. Okay, so going back to the index array, I want to show you the pattern that we are going to be following to group all the vertices together to form a facet. And it's the same way as for the STL. There are two patterns per loop. So we're going to start from, the, let's say, from this point right here. And then we're going to move one to the right, one below it, and that's going to be one facet. And then the next facet in the same loop is going to be the one, uh, this one, the one, the, the last one from the pre previous pattern, the one to the left of it, and then the very first one, the one that we started with. So if we were to call this uh, the node where we start to, if we were to give it a uh, index i and j, i being the rows and j being the columns, then the first pattern is going to be i comma j, then i comma j plus one, then i plus one comma j plus one, and then the next pattern is going to be i plus one comma j plus one i plus one comma j and i comma j. So I'm going to create two for loops. The first one is going to count the columns and the second one is going to count the, I'm sorry, the first one is going to count the rows and the second one is going to count the columns. So i for the rows is going to go from one to the number of rows minus one and then j for the columns is going to be from one columns minus one. First, what we're going to do is that we're going to start grouping together the indexes of the vertices that make up the facets. So the first index, we call it index one, is going to be equal to the array index, but it's going to be i comma j. And since there are three indices, then we can just copy and paste this. Two, three, and then this is going to be j plus one and i plus one j plus one okay so this would be the upside down l now we're going to store that in a in an array that i'm going to call face it and here before doing that i want to first initiate that array initialize that array so it's going to be face it yeah just like that and it's going to be face it here and below it, we're going to have index 1, index 2, and index 3. Okay, so what we're going to do is that we're going to initialize the facet. There's not going to be anything contained. There's no size. There's no anything for that facet. Then what we're going to do is that below whatever we have for facet, we're going to put these three indices. So since for the first loop, there's nothing, so nothing will be added, only this. And for the next times we go over the loop we're going to start putting these indexes below the ones already existing so this is for the upside down l now for the normal l pattern we can just copy this uh, it's going to be the same we just have to change the in indexes here so it's going to be like that just i plus one comma j and then it's going to be this. And we do the same. So what, what, what is going to happen is that it's going to, cal it's going to obtain what the index values are for the upside down L, uh, add them to the, to the facet array, and then below it is going to add the index values for the normal L facet our pattern. So once we do that, we can exit the loop. And now we're going to create the list of vert vertices. Now, so now we can go ahead and format the vertex array, and we're going to do this in the following way. So I am going to transpose the vector x. I'm going to give it a new variable name, So because I don't want to lose this format right here. So I'm going to do that, and I'm going to do the same for x, y, and z. I'm going to create a new array called vertices. This is going to list all the vertices and I'm going to list these three arrays as vector arrays in the following way. So first the x values, that's going to ensure that I get one column instead of an array. I'm going to get a, a vector that is going to be size whatever number of rows times one and then the same thing for x and y. Now I'm going to calculate the number of vertices. This is for the header, the information that goes on the header. So 
we're going to do that the following way using the size function, size of vertices, the number of rows, and then num facets is going to be equal to size of facets. It's going to be one. Okay, so we can go ahead and start typing stuff on the on the file again. So the next line that we have to include is the line listing the how many elements vertices uh, we have. So I am going to use the fprint function to print stuff on the output file. And I'm going to create a formatted string, which is going to contain the words uh, element vertex space, then the number of vertices uh, converted into a string format, and then a new line. Next, we have property float x, property float y, and property float uh, c. So I'll put them all in the same fprint function. You can, uh, I just add these new lines every time uh, I want a new line, so I can save some space. Next, the number of faces. We do that the same way we listed the element vertices. Next uh, is this line right here, which, yeah. Don't forget to add a new line at the end. And to close the header off, you just uh, add n underscore header and then new line. Now to print, I'm going to be using a for loop. I know that there's a way to print arrays into files in an easier way. I just haven't discovered that yet, that yet. But this method doesn't take that much time if you're not working with millions of vertices. So it's not that bad. So I'm going to go create a new for loop that goes from one to whatever the size of vertices is, comma one, which I guess this is going to be the same as the number of vertices, right? So I can just replace this. Yeah, and I'm going to be printing it line by line. So th that's why this is not a very efficient way to print this array. So I'm going to be using the fprint function. And here I am specifying the format I want the numbers to be printed as. So here I am telling it that is a float number and that I want 17 decimal points. And I have that repeated three times because the vertex has three values, x, y, and z, right? And then I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Once I'm done with the vertices, I'm going to do that for the facets. Uh, here I can, I guess I can change this. I haven't tried this, I hope it works. So yeah, in this case, uh, I added a three at the beginning because remember that we have to specify how many vertices each facet has. And in this case, I want the values to be printed as integers. Here I'm going to be adding this line at the end just to know how many facets we have. Here the display function is going to display in, 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 here into the, the this side of the screen is going to display how many faces we have. And running this, okay, so there's an error here. Face it, face it, okay, so I guess, yeah, I didn't type this correctly. Face it, face it. Okay, so there were a couple of mistakes. So yeah, we have 800 facets and we're going to end up with a file that looks like this. Now, if you try to open it, it's going to open the text file. You're not going to be able to see the 3D geometry yet. But if you open it with 3D Builder, there you go, there's a sphere. If you open it with 3D Viewer, yeah, there's a sphere. If you open it with um, Paraview, there you can see the sphere. If you open it with MeshLav, there is a sphere. Just to show you that the code works, I wrote a script that creates a spring, and I'm going to be tr and I'm going to try to export that using the code we just created. Let's see. So yeah, there's a there's a spring. Yeah, the code works. And yeah, if you have any questions, please also leave them in the comments of this video. I'm going to try to answer them as best as I can. These videos should go nicely with the other tutorials I have on how to create 3D geometries.